Today on the Justice Court, the plaintiff, Yetunde Sani, is asking the court to compel her husband to be responsible for the upkeep of their children. Arise. Court in session. Honorable Judge Fumi Asaolu presiding. Please be seated. Your Honor, this case is between Yetunde Sonny and Oula B. Sonny. Parties one. Thank you, Aki. You're welcome. Yetunde Sonny. I think you have some health challenges and you'd love to have a seat. You can take your seat. And um, you brought your husband, so that's your wife. You are the one that brought your husband to court, Well, What's the problem? Are you still living together? No. When did you separate? Actually, you ran away. You absconded from home. When? That was um, last, this, Recent December made it a year. He absconded with another woman. Okay. So the reason why I wanted to go back to the um, root of the issue is because of that, mostly because of that um, woman. She's named Huremu Ubeta, who I later, with evidence, had, a, had an issue for him. What kind of marriage did you conduct? Yeah, I did, um, um, we did introduction, we did um, registry, we did um, engagement, we did church wedding. All right. Meeting. So, like I said, I cast my mind back. When he sent for me, it was in the church then, because the whole thing got me a little bewildered, because I see the more, thing did what? a little bewildered at the end of the day, okay. and it's part of what gave me this. Um, this health issue. Because since he left, I've been battling with the health issue and it was even not only me, myself and my kids. So when he sent for me then, I, I could remember vividly I was in a friend's house. Um, I was 29 years old then. That was far back as um, 20 years ago now. So he called me, he sent for me. He was the prayer warrior leader in the church. I had hardly known him then. Then when I met with him, the first thing the pastor that I was living with told me was, I should be very, very careful because he's a very cunning person. I never even, you know, I mean, my, I, I was very young in the faith then. So I believe Christian thing that probably prayer will take care of things like that. We continued until we eventually got married. We married two months into the marriage. I was a year, I mean, I was a month pregnant. The next thing I saw was Uremu came visiting. She came for the wedding. She, what she even gave me that day, I still remember. I was telling my kid of recent the gift she brought for the wedding. So two months into the wedding, Uremu, Uremu came on a visit. So we were just talking together. And the next thing, I just said, so how old is the pregnancy? I was like, what kind of thing is this? I was really brought with me that I could you be infringing into someone else's privacy? So I told her that is not just right. And I changed my tone and she had to go. And immediately she left, I faced him. I said, how could you really know I'm pregnant? I said, this is not just fair. In fact, that day, it was serious issue. Because there was never anything I would say that he will listen. It is either it's raising, pointing finger at my face that was just the order. Even till yesterday there, when he stood up and came closer, I was pointing finger at me. So we fought that day. We, we actually fought with, with my pregnancy because he won't just, he won't say anything wrong in most of the things he, he does in life. So that case passed like that. I gave birth to my baby. So we used to have issues, issues, too much issues. How many and children do you have? With you? We have five at the moment. We have five children. I'm looking at your statements, and you've broken down everything. So I'll just be bringing them out okay. so you'll be. Okay. First, you have issue of violence and assault. Yes. Can you tell me what happened? Okay. With that? So this is just where I am. 
the the issue started with my two weeks baby, my first baby of Mubari, like I said. That day, food issue. You went to work, you came back. Baby is just two, less than two weeks. And I showed him, ah, you came back this around nine o'clock. You didn't even ask me. I've not even eaten since morning. I told him the mother was around. And everything would just be like, at the end of the day, you went out, brought food for the mother. I said, ah, won't I eat? Issue started. I said, me, I don't understand this kind of marriage. You. Somebody just gave back. You can't feed me. And in the middle of the issue, I was annoyed. I just said, let me go out with the baby. As I held, I was holding. Okay, I held the phone. The phone was with me. As I was going out, he just said I should give him the phone. He wanted to drag it. I just said, leave me. He just gave me. This is where he deals with me, the edge of the hand. He gave it was? Me the edge of the okay. hand. This was where he gave me. I shouted that night. And people had to, we were even in a room. People had to rush in. And the first time in my life, I was like, is this the person I married? I ran out. I didn't sleep home. They took me out. I didn't sleep home that night. I still came back. I wanted to come and pick some things. I ran after 10. And he didn't even say anything. Himself and the mother. If I went to beat me, finish. He went to tell the mother outside. I said, Moti, no. I've beaten her. I left. And I didn't sleep home that night. I ran. The next morning, I went to my godfather's house. The man that stood for me for the wedding. And I told the man. He was very, very mad. I said, ah, what kind of a man? is the, the person you brought home. They called for him. They called for the mother. And one striking thing the man said that he said if he's from the place he, he came from, that um, is a taboo. If any man beats a woman under wet blood. And this very child, part of the thing that pained me, I gave her to her in uh, Redeemed Church, Oyibo. He was there while I was giving birth to the baby. He was the one that they even told me they used blade on me when the baby will not come out on time. And I've been on labor for four days for this girl. And he treated me that. And the man was, he really scolded him and everything. He had to tell him to beg. Even the mother, the both of them beg. They apologized. Yes. Because I have it there, they eventually apologized. Yes. Yeah, he had it there with the mother. We left. And the you spoke of, about extramarital affair. I have bigamy here. Yeah. The case of Uremu is still um, in view. And like I said, after the. Um, issue of coming asking for pregnancy and I told him I don't like things like that so I expected him to have laid off her coming or whatever but to my greatest surprise I discovered we got into another house that's just barely two years into the marriage the case of Rima crept up again so she he told me one day that um, Uremu is pregnant and I is pregnant for for her boyfriend because the thing is always a boyfriend. But I guess I later discovered that it was the boyfriend was a code for him. He said, Uremu got pregnant for the boyfriend and that um, she, she tried to abort and that it, the thing was hanging. Immediately I heard, I was like, ah, oh, no, it's not good. Since she has tried it once, then she had to go for evacuation. I said, tell her to come. Of which she did. When she came, we went to the hospital and she had the evacuation, as I thought. And when we slept, I even told him that she should stay for like two, three days. That would take care of her. I never knew anything was between them. And in the middle of the night, I slept. I had a dream. In the dream, what I had clearly from my mom is, why did she said it in Yoruba? Why did you allow? Why did you open down your, uh, your door and allow snakes to be coming in and going out? Immediately, I woke him up. I said, this is what I saw. He knew I'm gifted in dream. Likewise, he too. So when I told him, I said, please, tomorrow morning, I don't want to remove here again. Let her go. This cannot be just anything. Of which she did the next morning. In fact, I told her myself, I said she should come and be doing. She left. I, I thought that was the end of it with Uremu. This was... 16, some 16 years ago, after the 20 years knowing Uremu. So after then, another thing I discovered, when we left the house, we moved to Ifume's house, Major Ifume. I still had a dream. I saw Uremu still with him. I called him. I said, are you still going to Uremu? In fact, he didn't deny. You know when I say, you know, I'm a prophetess by my calling. So he said yes. So all of this, I was thinking like, 
Well, what time did you have? A married man. Close. Go to Remu. I still scolded. I thought that would be like, come to his mind. We were both workers in the church. We were both in the choir department. If I was a choir leader, we both sing. I'm a gospel artist. And I thought everything would just be like, perhaps he didn't know he should not do that as a man. He, he, I still scolded him that day. About four times, he, he ran away from house. And each time he runs, he, he, he ran then. One thing is very peculiar. It will be a time that there is no food for me and the children. And I'm the one that is always on these children, teaching them, teaching my children. None of my five children ever attended school. Because of them, I formed La Best School, La Bia and Esther School. In the city room, I'll try to gather some children in the neighborhood, come and join. None of my children, apart from her and the sister, when they went to write their external, um, I went to register them, and the one after her, when I went to, they, she didn't, they didn't even do all this junior work. They didn't do. My first, first daughter, when she uh, wrote her mock, I took her, she got admission to the uh, Queen's College then. No money to pay. So, and I was, I'd been the one teaching them. And this is Z. He will be telling people, go about painting me blue black. She's not working, she's not working. I said, I'm not working. Teaching these children, if you have to pay me, how much will you pay me? Even when I entered marriage, self, two things I noticed. The mother, when she was going, after she came for the, uh, my daughter, she went with my, my wedding shoe, only for her to return that she mistakenly took it. Then another thing, my results, my, 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 my uh, uh, diploma in computer that I did, and my school start, I had seven years in my school start, and I had two credits in my school start. Then that was 89 then. So these were the things I was putting up with. So about four times, like, yeah, as I absconded from work, I made up my mind after the first one that I would not look for him. But each time he, he, he just ran like that. The only thing is, this student care. He, he, so I discovered he was doing it intentionally. You spoke about a time when he wanted to choke you, right? Yes, ma'am. And, and your children, children have to carry, they are to carry stick uh -huh. to rescue you, okay? Then you still have some part where you said some years back, you were sick to the point of death. Yes. And he later confessed to me that he was still going to visit to Remo, which is what you just said. Because I, I highlighted main points of your, then you talk about, abandonment, negligence of responsibility. He never sent the five children to any school. At all. Then you said two girls are done yes. since two years ago with their school sets. Yeah, that's not their and you have to register them as external students then. Mm -hmm. So now you spoke about defamation of character. Yes, ma'am. Well, what do you have to say on that? Yeah. The aspect of defamation of character, even within my children, my children later told me many at times when I go out, they would call them, we begin to tell them things. In fact, that was what even made the issue. But me too, I carried on the stick that day. Me, I don't know how to lie. I carried on the stick. It would sit my children down. We begin to tell them terrible things. It would say, uh, me, the house I come from, because he wanted to kill one gecko which was true when we were in courtship, that my father shouted at him that we are wicked people, that because of that particular issue, he kept saying, he told my children, all of them, that your, your, your father's mother is a, is a wicked, and so your mother too is a wicked person. He said, I'm a witch. You, you, in fact, the night he went out, two hours he was outside shouting, shouting to the whole company, she's a witch. When we got to the human rights people, I mean, welfare last month, I went to report him. Most of the things I've been hearing from people, even my family, when I went there, for the first time I went to my family that December, they called me. I didn't even know I used to call because I'm a very private person. I didn't know I used to call. And my, he got a, a stage, my immediate sister said, maybe the two families should sit together. Maybe this thing has to be dissolved. Because the things he, he will come and be telling them about me. And he has, was so successful at causing division between me and my family. But I just spoke to my young, I mean, immediate elder brother this morning. This one, I was out of the place. I never, I never spoke with this, my brother. I just spoke with him this morning. My daughter was there at the hotel where they lodged us. So he said, me. <laughs> he said, I lured him into marriage. He said, I seduced him into marriage. 
But you have five children together. So <laughs> it's a serious case, man. He said I seduced him. I did say something. Things. And this, this was the that thing was he was about to say. That was just he was saying that they are secret. They said she lured me to be having sex with her. Sex, sex, sex with her. Having sex with her. She said because she was too old. That's why I lured him into marriage while we were in courtship. I married at the age of 32. I mean 31. He was 32. He, and he was saying all of these things like as if there's no man's business. He said, she fights everywhere she goes. I'm a very, very private person. She said, everybody, she will fight with them. That she, she, she will not listen. And he is the type that if we go to a party, the family will tell him, go and be picking bottles. As, as hold, he will be the one picking bottles up and down. <laughs> if he goes to his friend's house, he will be the one with clipper, cutting head. With my beautiful child, I will call him. I say, what, what is all of this? He will even want those people to know. How long did you cut before you got married? We cut it for two years. We cut it for well, two years. He said, seen, I seduced the, If you see the way he was saying it, the he seduced me. Should have seen few things, you know. Then back to Uremu's case. It was from there. I later discovered September, this same Uremu, they had a chat. Because the same number we were calling on Anonymous. I saw September last year, 2001. Say, have you connected to the man of God? And he was ref, uh, answering. In fact, this was 921. In fact, I just remember, we're still together in the house. So when I saw, I said, ah, ah, who is this? I flipped. I saw Ogbet, Sef, uh, Sefun Ogbeta Brown. Her name is Uremu Ogbeta. I said, okay, no problem. I started messaging Uremu. I said, Uremu, this is what... In fact, I messaged until... I now told my daughter, I said, this thing, I can't believe. Hey, you are still dealing with Uremu. I now called my daughter, called Uremu. You know it. You know I said, the... call Uremu. So when Uremu picked the call, I now said... This and this and that. The next thing you say, he said, what is wrong in that? What is wrong in that? I and my husband, we have known each other for long before you even knew him. He said, it's my man. I said, ah. And he called the phone on me. This was just last year. And before I knew it, I, I wanted to call him. When I wanted to, I was calling him, the phone was busy immediately. I, and I now went back calling Uremu too. Her phone was busy. Both phones were busy. <laughs> About 30 minutes, they were done. I called him. Till tomorrow, he didn't pick that call. He didn't pick. So the whole thing was like, I now told, I now remember that lady that has been telling me one short lady. Has, I went, I, I, she's my uh, friend's sister. I connected my sister. I said, please tell this person. I want your sister. I want to, I, want, I explain everything. And before we knew it, I said, can you just help me? He said, Auntie, but I've been telling you, I used to see him. And before we knew it, the girl said, no problem. She has a customer that is her own friend. You remember customer that is her friend. That's she will tell him, I mean, tell her if she can help her, he explain everything. And he told him that that man that used to come is a married man that is her sister at the end of the day. This is Huremu. This is the daughter. Let me, let me have a look. That's the number of Huremu. Huremu Beta is her name. So after I ran away, anytime he come home, he's now on jeans. He will even be sagging at times. <laughs> he will do his hand like this. He will say, I have my plans. I have my plans. I have plans. I don't have time for you and your... She, she, she even told me to my face, you seduce me. If I want to hold him, he will run. if he come through front door, he will run away through kitchen. By the time they will go outside, they will not even see a trace of, of him. That's why I kept running out of skelter. That's why I kept running out of skelter from me. Abandoned the seven children. The plaintiff. Yet in the sunny alleges that her husband was having an affair and that he eventually deserted home, leaving her to cater for five children alone. She claims to have a proof that her husband has a love child from his side chick. The plaintiff stated that she developed a health condition due to the mistreatment meted on her and the shock from what her husband, a pastor, has turned out to be. She is in court to seek redress. You know, he has to respond to all this too. Let me hear his own side of the story. Thank you, ma'am. I want to stand here to say that. All that I want to say here, God is my witness. Mm -hmm. I will not tell a lie. I'm a child of God, I'm a pastor. Mm -hmm. By the grace of God, what I will say here, if you can say, I can stand on any altar I'm standing here and swear. Oh, if what all she's saying is true, let her, let her stand, let her, let her swear to God. I can swear to God. I want to say, I met this woman as a virgin. Up to today, I've never met any woman in this life except this woman. When I met her, I met her as I didn't know anything about her. I told her, I said, 
I don't know anything. I said, my language was, I want to learn. And when I met her, I met her, my first salary, I, in, in courtship, man. I, till I left home, till I left home, I gave up my all. My, if I'm taking anything, either salary or, or anything, it's, I'm, I'm done making the money, she's not spending it. And she worked for, like she said, she worked for 10 months. She we, we got married and, it will let, me, let me start from where she started because I, it's not as if I said she lured me. But this is what she told me herself, and God is my witness. And I'll tell my children, all the witnesses they, they will say today, let them say today, because tomorrow, I know the truth will come to, to, to stay, if it, even if it's 20 years. Because I, I met her, I don't know anything, but I never had any girlfriend in my, in my life. I met her. When she, what she told me later was that she had been praying, or after the year of covenant and all that, she had been praying, no man, no man, nobody came, and she went for deliverance for seven weeks. At K2. The person I was holding the deliverance happened to be a pastor from Foursquare, a Reverend uh, uh, son, um, uh, Amy Son. And he did the deliverance for seven, seven weeks. At, his, at the expiration of seven weeks, the man told him, your husband is coming. And I was one that came. And somebody came, somebody, a pastor prayed in my, that happens to be a, a that's someone that wants to marry her friend. That's supposed to be a husband to her friend. That's an older friend. That wants to meet her with her friend. So she now said, are you married? He said, no. Do you want to get married? I said, yes. He prayed for her. And he said, in one month. So all these things put together, and I came to as if I was a prayer answered. <laughs> so when she took me to that deliverance uh, man, when we got there, I never knew. The man, I, I, was, I, was, I was expecting him to welcome me as the lucky man. But I saw this guy, the man was not, was not friendly. She was not that told me later that the man told her, this is not your husband, let him go. But she said, uh, after seven years, she, she will not let him go. She didn't tell me. So she, that's why I said, uh, did I, did, they told us, ma. They told us, they told him, they told her, they told me too. And they were, people were like pitying me because they know this woman. That what she, they are, not that they know, they have seen something that, um, it is you. What the language told her was that. The pastor said, no. She was, I told the pastor, you are not that said, I should go and pray. I prayed and I told you what I saw. Now you said, when she discovered some, Traits in her. She said, Ah, this one, I discovered this is that there are there are traits of worldliness in this woman. That she won't be good for. And, and the way the man handled it made me to like, what is all this? Why you are saying you uh, your And as I'm, you know, uh, I, I became and uh, because I was seen with the pastor. So the pastor said, Look, let me not pray. Go and meet my friend, let my pray, pray for you. And the man, man, the man said, What I saw is I saw a dead end. Ask her. They kept seeing it dead end. After we team became a, you know, an issue in the church. After, after some time, the team went down. We came to the pastor and said, go back to my friend. Let him pray. Maybe we go to that pastor again. He said, dead end. I said, which one is, which two of us said, which so, one is dead end, dead end. The so two of you were we now, told, Yes. You were told that at the we same were told. time. You were together. Yes. Then. And no, we, no, we, no, see, we, no, no, no. We went ahead and, and she, she told me that I was an errand boy. She said, all this, I'm, I'm too simple. So you see me as a foolish person. He told me, look, there are some tests here. There are some tests that she sent. So many of them, I kept them. He said, there are 50, there are about 50. I see have it here. My home too is there. So she said, I'm an errand boy at the age of 30. They are still sending me. So he now told me that I'm the one, because the pastor, when she discovered some things, we fixed our wedding for 20, 2002. I met her in 2002. So we did the courtship for some months, and we are planning the wedding. The pastor called us. He said, we should sit down. And it, because I sit with the pastor, she now saying, she passed now said, oh yeah, rise. You're not writing. The man, she became an, I used to want to be planning for us because I married this guy. Because the issue was that she, the pastor, immediately he discovered that we are together. True, do, true, the pastor was now doing, behaving in a way that, uh, uh, now I can say, Esther, leave that department, go to, go to this place, do this. And she now said, is it because I'm married to this guy that you are now, before you call me sister, and now you are not calling me Esther, you know, anyhow. And when it comes to the issue of the planning of the wedding, at that point, on his, in, his, in his office, something happened. And they began to, with the pastor, began to argue. They began to talk to him. The pastor said, ah, me? He now tell me, he told me, he said, oh yeah, two of you, talk, talk to her before he said, he asked us to go out. And the pastor now canceled the wedding. People were now saying, ah, is, he a, is he your father? <coughs> and the pastor canceled the wedding. And all that, and all that. Is he, ah, now what, this church said, this, this. So she now told me, she called me, I'm a mumu. She told me, leave the pastor. Leave the house. Leave the church. I don't know that she was taking me out of my out of my out of my uh, taking me to a place she would deal with me. She I left the pastor, left the house. 
We will now want gene. That's why we started having sex. I say, I've never had sex, man. I started having sex with her before marriage. We had the same rally. And I was like, each time I pray, don't, I, I don't die in this thing until we got married. This woman, we lived in, we were married for, we were married for 17 years. We lived in 13 houses. This matter is unfolding as the court proceeding continues in the next episode. Have you been cheated or have a dispute and want justice? Don't take laws into your hands. Log on to www.thejusticecourt.com and submit your case.